about five years old, wearing a suit that is too big for him and a drawn-on mustache. He clears his throat to signal the play is about to begin. <coughs> no one seems to notice. He clears his throat very loudly. <coughs> the lights dim. Hello and welcome to our show. Here is some stuff you need to know. In a suburb of Savannah, Garden City, GA, lived a girl named Anna, whose family doesn't know she's gay. <laughs> Little Anna didn't wear pearls. Little Anna was attracted to girls. <laughs> her twin sisters laughed at her. Her mother was too drunk. <laughs> One fine day, you never would have thunk, this girl that's smart, complex, little scary, gets visited by a drag queen fairy. <laughs> <laughs> this drag queen fairy, fierce as a lion, had advice to give and a sequined shoulder to cry on. Anna was missing out on so much of life by pretending that one day she'd be a man's wife. And who is this DJ that goes by Prince? Not the artist formerly known as, or whatever he's been known as since. <laughs> You will find this out and a lot more if you endure the dramatics that are in store. And as for me, I am just an actor trying to make it and be famous hereafter. <laughs> I have wanted to act since I exited the womb, and I will do so until I enter my tomb. <laughs> but this I will say with the utmost conviction. Do not trust me, for deceit is my addiction. Fairy tales need narrators, and happily ever after, they need struggle, hope, and maybe some laughter. Yet without me, you would not have a story. You'd have a bunch of people living in their despair and their glory. But with me, the trusted deceiver, now you know how to sit back and enjoy the show. He bows grandly, expecting some sort of massive standing ovation, and nothing happens. He gestures grandly as the curtains open on the giant lavish mansion. Anna something cooks dinner for Anna Lay, Anna May, and stepmother while they watch television. <laughs> <laughs> Anna May pops a button off of her cardigan. Anna something comes running with a needle and thread. She fixes it. Anna something writes Anna Lay's college essay while Anna Lay acts out what to say. Stepmother drinks and pops pills. <laughs> Anna Lay and Anna May text message in unison. <laughs> Anna Something takes their clothes away and scolds them. Anna May and Anna Lay both storm off stage in opposite directions with their arms crossed. Anna Something massages stepmother's back. <laughs> Anna May and Anna Lay enter in pretty dresses as boyfriend one and boyfriend two arrive. Stepmother jumps up off the couch to hug them. <laughs> they go off on double date. Stepmother passes out. Anna Something folds laundry. Somewhere in the distance, Prince spins records and tries to pump up an imaginary crowd as fairy drag mother does a perfectly choreographed routine in a fabulous dress and heels. In another place, the sisters and boyfriends are sloppy drunk and dance terribly, because something's definitely involved. <laughs> Anna something speaks. She looks out the window forlornly. Anna something steals a bottle of brandy from the snoring stepmother. She sniffs it. She sends it. She pours it out and goes back to sleeping. Anna May and Anna Lay stumble in suddenly on the You're going to wake her up. OMG, Anna something. You would have loved this club we went to so much fun. Oh, no. She wouldn't have. Anna something hates fun. Right, Anna? No, I just don't like your idea of fun. Well, like, it's not our fault that your idea of fun involves sewing and the 1700s or whatever. The Renaissance did not occur in the 1700s. OMG, oh, that's why you're writing our college essays. We heart you so <laughs> much, Anna something! <laughs> yeah, toads. What are you doing? Nothing. Let me see! You guys unfriended me on Facebook and then Instagrammed a picture of it? <laughs> Instagram is my jam. Expecting forever. <laughs> Amaro is so much better. Um, as long as you don't like Calvin, then we're fine. Ew! Calvin is super jank. It makes you look so fake. 
up at this god-awful time of morning. <laughs> Anna! Yes, Mother? No, not you. Why on earth did I marry a man with another Anna child? <laughs> Anna something? No response. Anna something? No response. Anna something! Anna something comes stumbling down the stairs, bleary-eyed, wearing plaid boxers and a giant holy t-shirt. <gasps> <gasps> Anna something! What on God's great big green earth do you think you're doing? You think you can come in here walking around looking like a, a boy? Where's the matching nightgown we gave you for Christmas last year? Do you not love us? <laughs> Who cares if the lesbian loves us? No one's gonna go around saying the word lesbian in my house. Do you hear me? Sorry, Mom, but just look at her dykish appearance. Anna Lane and they pull out their cell phones. Now, Anna Sampha, there has been a recent tragedy. I know. I can't believe corporations are people now, too. <laughs> the scary world we live in. What? Have you been reading the news again? <laughs> Ew, the news. Early this morning. Nine minutes ago, if you want to go by the time of my phone. Nine minutes ago, if you want to go by my beautiful wiggle By six minutes. Would you have a phone when I popped you out too? Shut up and stop interrupting me. <laughs> Whatever, I'm better. No, you're meaner. And you're a whiny little baby. No, who was the one who was crying about her curling iron breaking like three seconds ago? That's totally legit thing to cry about, Anna! Girls, shut the heck up. Anna something. The curling iron broke. Tragic? Yes. Unfixable? No. In any case, we need you to go down to CVS and get us a new one. And while you're there, pick up my prescriptions. There is one for Xanax and maybe one for Vicodin, depending on who's working, of course. <laughs> if it is Marcia, tell her she can take her god-awful acrylics and shove them up her you know where. But if it is Ernie, tell him I'll call him later and slip him this. She hands Anna a $50 bill. Also, start the coffee and fry up a few waffles before you go. I haven't eaten anything since great granddaddy Lewis bit the dust. Girls, need anything else while Anna's out? Anna Lane and Anna May continue to be entranced by their phones. Girls! No response. 
She looks to Anna something like a mother looking helplessly to a babysitter in hopes she will parent her children instead. <laughs> Anna something begrudgingly snatches the phones away. Anna and Anna. Anna is going to the store to get a new curling iron. Do you need anything else? Hairspray. Anna May. Um, new diamond earrings that go with my Sicilian dress. What happened to your old ones? Dropped them down the sink. Sorry, sorry. It's fine. It's fine. They were only the two thousand dollar pair after all. It's my two little girls big day today, and I'm not here to be a mean old mama. Now, Anna something, get your flat, ugly boy ass going. They scurry back upstairs. Stepmother passes out again on the couch. Anna something trudges into the kitchen. Narrator skip, skips down the stairs past Anna May and Anna Lay, still wearing footy pajamas. Warning, everybody! <laughs> no one notices him. He goes over to the kitchen. Yummy waffles. Anna, can I have one? Please, please, pretty please, with syrup and whipped cream and a cherry on top? No response. What I forgot to mention previously is that because I'm the narrator, they can't see me, or hear me, or smell my baby fresh hair. <laughs> <laughs> Anna something's mom died in childbirth, and her dad, he, oh, whoops, I'm supposed to save that part for later. My mother died in childbirth too. And my father, he lived on a houseboat in the Middle East. I lived with him. He bought me all the sweets in the world. I love sweets. I have multiple sweet teeth. <laughs> he stands there. This is hard. He gets sad. I'm practically invisible. He smiles. But you can see me, right? Anna something turns off the stove. She pushes her coat on over her pajamas and exits. Narrator sneaks over and steals a waffle. <laughs> he puts a ton of whipped cream on it. He takes a big bite. He smiles. 9 a.m. Anna May and Anna Lay sit on the couch playing hand games, their hair now perfectly curled. Stepmother is still passed out, an open pill bottle and a half drunk glass of brandy sit on the table next to her. <laughs> Say yes to the dress, plays in the bathroom. <laughs> Cinderella, dressed in yellow, went upstairs to kiss a fella. By mistake, she kissed a snake. How many doctors does it take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Anna, come on, we never get to the end. Whatever, I got bored. Ew, since when does harem pants back in style? Nine more hours till cotillion! Ugh! Anna Lay falls dramatically back on the couch. What? Anna Lay, what is it? Whatever will we do to pass the time? Mm, Bride still lives near a farm? Over it. Steal mom's brandy? Anna Lay looks over at the snoring stepmother. She finished it. Play Never Have I Ever? We've never ever done anything of importance. Do you think he'll propose to me tonight? He hasn't even texted me for. 27 minutes! <laughs> what about you? What about me? You never talk about getting engaged. Do you even want to? Of course I do. It's just that I'm hot, and no, I don't even have to try. <laughs> it's inevitable. How dare you? They both go back to their phones. Let's do a spoke quiz. We're too dumb. <laughs> Let's get Anna something to do it. Anna something! Anna something! Anna something! <sighs> Stepmother jumps off the couch. Anna something comes downstairs half asleep. Is it so hard to shut the hell up for a few <laughs> hours? <laughs> Stepmother pushes past Anna something and stumbles up the stairs. What do you guys want? Uh, can you have to, let's do a spoke of it? Are you kidding? No, we can't do it by ourselves. It's a great bed. Do one on uh, famous dogs or something. I only know the Taco Bell one. <laughs> Yo quiero Taco Bell. You'll care to me. <laughs> Never mind. Entertain yourselves. Anna something throws something at them. It almost hits Anna Lay. Oh, and she Anna something! Anna something goes back upstairs. What is it? A book. Ew! <laughs> a book! <laughs> Anna Lay throws it aside. Anna May picks it up. The 
Handmaiden's Tale by Margaret Atwood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it smells like Birkenstocks and overgrown armpit hair. <laughs> Anna, can we do something together? We stay together, aren't we? No, but like, actually. Fine. They both put their phones down. Narrator jumps broke in the background and giggles. Lemonade. Iced tea. Coca-Cola. Pepsi. Turn around, touch the ground, kick your boyfriend out of town! <laughs> 12 p.m. Stepmother Anna Lay and Anna Mae sit on the couch watching Bridezilla. Anna Lay is standing her nails while looking at her phone. Anna Mae is using her phone as a mirror to put on makeup. <laughs> Stepmother is drinking an elaborate looking cocktail. OMG. No one responds. OMG. No one responds. OMG! Shut your mouth, Anna Lay. Amy's just about to beat up the preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? We already seen this episode like a million times. I care. And if you don't shut up, you're going to take your butt straight up to your room for the rest of the evening and miss out on Cotillion. But, Mom! Look! She shoves the phone in front of stepmother's face. Stepmother nearly <laughs> on her <laughs> I knew that little slut was gonna get pregnant sooner or later. <laughs> you guys, don't be so mean. Jenny Lee's only 14. <laughs> her family must be so embarrassed. Oh, uh, these girls even still talk to her sister. What's her name? Kaylee Ann? Oh, she's sort of prude. So, is her god awful mother? I wonder how Jenny got that way. Mom, you're the best. Can you have a cocktail? Absolutely not. Mom, you're supposed to be cool and not prude. The drinking age is 21, you fools. Now, where is our food? I am starving. And a something. What are you going to make us for lunch? I, I want, want a double grilled, grilled cheese sandwich, sandwich on white bread with ham, tomatoes, tomatoes and an extra pickle. Jinx, you owe me a round of coke! <laughs> that must be a joke. <laughs> you girls need to watch your figures for this evening. Make us some steamed broccoli and slice up a raw cucumber, would you? That sounds disgusting. I don't care what it sounds like, Anna Lay. Do you want to be a bride or a fat ass? Oh, I'm trying to be fat. <laughs> Shut up, Anna Lay. <laughs> Anna something, take your scrawny toothpick butt to the kitchen pronto. Stepmother goes back to watching TV. Anna Mae and Anna Lay go back to their phones. Something happens in the cell phone world. Hey, give it back! I was gonna post this as my status, you whore! So what? I beat you. Oh, fair! I beat you out of the womb. I beat you at getting the most girls at soccer camp. I beat you in getting the lead in Bye Bye Birdie. And I'm gonna beat you by getting to a better college. And a better sorority. And a better fiance. <laughs> LOL. Face it, I am better all around. Mom! <laughs> Emily is being a cunt! Anna Lay, stop being a con for the love of Jesus. Stop ruining my show. Anna Lay is just jealous because I beat her in everything and have two functional kidneys. Oh, stop it! <laughs> I don't need both of them to function. Oh, for the love of God, Anna Mae, don't go around boasting about that. Listen! They go back to their phones. Anna something where appears with a steamed broccoli and sliced cucumber. Stepmother takes two slices of cucumber, puts them over her eyes, and says, <laughs> You ungrateful little cunt. <laughs> Instantly falls asleep. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, uh, now can you make us grilled cheeses? Can't you guys learn how to cook? <laughs> I'm afraid I'll burn my pretty little hands. I'm afraid I'll burn the house down. What about your boyfriends? <laughs> in a microwave or pouring us glasses of wine. <laughs> Stepmother sits up suddenly as if possessed by a hungry demon. She clutches Anna something's arm. Make me a steak. Now, <laughs> my iron level is very low and my body feels completely empty and I just want to smash the living daylights out of every pretty little peach living in the entire state of Georgia. It's because you haven't eaten in 10 days. I was doing it! in the dishwasher. Girls, never grow old. Never, ever, ever, ever. It's exciting.
exhausting. <laughs> she falls back dramatically on the couch. Anna Ryan's anime give her a judgmental look and go back to their phone. 3 p.m. Narrator tiptoes down the stairs carrying a bag. He brings it center stage and dumps out a ton of makeup. He makes up his face as he speaks. I have decided that at this point I will change my appearance. The thinking behind this is that if I change my appearance, then they will notice me. They will look me in the eye and say, Oh my goodness, where have you been? It's you. Where have you been all these years? And we will laugh and cry and look at old photos of our family vacation to France or Disneyland or all those weeks spent on the houseboat in the Middle East. And we will look at those photos and think, How did we ever forget to be, how to be so happy? With crumbs of baguette flaking off our mouths, Mickey Mouse ears atop our heads, and Mediterranean sands beneath our feet. A happy home is a sappy home, my father used to say. <laughs> my father liked to lie, <laughs> and I never asked why. <coughs> Those photographs do not exist, and neither do I. He has smeared makeup across his face. He looks in the mirror. He smiles. He leaves the makeup on the floor. 3 p.m. Anna Lay standing amidst the makeup in her cotillion gown screams. <coughs> Anna Mae, half dressed, and Anna something come running down the stairs. Stepmother jumps off the couch. Oh, for heaven's sake, Anna Lay! I thought somebody died. My dress has a hole! <gasps> oh, Lord! That is possibly worse than death! Anna something! Anna something! I'm right here. Get the sewing kit from under my bed pronto. Hurry up, lesbian. What the heck did I tell you, Anna Lay? <laughs> Never mention lesbian in your house. So now you're going to go against my word and say it? How many times do I have to tell you, huh? <clears throat> Y'all think you can do whatever you want in this house? Going around, talking trash, disrespecting your own mama? I know I taught you better than that. Anna something! Go get the sewing kit and clean up this makeup when you get back. Or maybe she should put some on her face. What sort of cheap ass material did she even get? She probably got it at the fabric barn. That's where all those dainty rednecks go. Like Jenny Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Jenny Lee's gonna wear flannel to Cotillion. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Jenny Lee will come riding in on the cow. <laughs> Jenny Lee's boyfriend's penis that you saw. Just because I'm not like you and your sister and your drugged up mother does not make me a bad person. Does it? 
doesn't mean I can't play dirty like you. Imagine if pathetic little Chase Andrews got you pregnant instead of Jenny Lee. Imagine if your boyfriend finds out that you cheated on him. I could go on and on, Annalee, but I'll save you the embarrassment. But be advised, I know about pretty much every nasty thing you've done to me since age, since age three, when you and Anna Mae put dog shit on my hairbrush in hopes I'd go to school smelling like a garbage disposal, and I am not going to forget about it. Yeah, keep laughing, you ungrateful little snail. Laugh yourself right to an early grave. I know you've been stealing mom's pills. Everybody, I'm ready for the ball. He notices Annalee passed out on the floor. He sighs and hangs his head in defeat. He picks up the bottom of his dress to reveal he is still wearing pants under it and trudges back up the stairs like an angry toddler. 6 p.m. Annalee is still collapsed in a heap. The doorbell rings. No one comes. The doorbell rings a few times in a row. No one comes. The doorbell rings impatiently. Annalee comes scurrying down the stairs. She sees Annalee on the ground. Anna, Anna, wake up! The doorbell rings again. Oh, one second! Annalee! The doorbell rings again. One second! Anna May grabs a glass of water and throws it on Annalee's face. Oh. Annalee, looking like a wet poodle, jumps up and claws Anna May's face. <laughs> Anna May pushes her off and heads to the door. She opens it. There stands boyfriend one and boyfriend two, almost identical in normalcy, except that one has slightly longer hair and a more lopsided smile. They stand there staring at the girls. Uh. Hi, Anna Mae. We were ringing the doorbell for like a while. Hi, Anna Mae. Did you just go swimming? <laughs> Dude, what did I do? Don't worry about it. She's just been moody all day. Boyfriend one checks Anna Mae out. Dude, stop checking on my girlfriend. Sorry. I forgot which one I was dating for a second. Suddenly, <laughs> walks downstairs dressed like Miss America. <laughs> Hello, boys! Damn, Miss Crawford, looking good. <laughs> Total milk right here. Oh, stop it. I hardly had time to pull this outfit together. Can I offer anyone a drink? Where's Anna Lay? She went upstairs. She was kind of pissing. Oh, that is absurd. Get her down here this instant. Who wants a drink? Where's Anna something? Anna something? Anna something? Anna something! That lazy little witch. It's no worries, Miss Crawford. We can get our own drinks. Can I offer anyone a beer? Me, dude. Oh, how thoughtful. <laughs> and me as well. Look at what a nice boyfriend you have, Anna Mae. Um, I thought we were allowed to drink alcohol. Actually, I'm her boyfriend. Oh, dear. <laughs> My apologies. But, you know, since anime is the more gracious one, perhaps you two should consider dating instead. <laughs> <laughs> anime, go get your sister. We have to leave for the ball. I'll go get her. Look at you, so gracious. Anna doesn't deserve you. <laughs> Oh, it's not your fault that you were born inferior to your brother. These things happen all the time. Just look at Anna something, although she's technically not related by blood. But cheer up, you're handsome. Get me a beer and get one for yourself. Anna Mae flops down on the couch. Stepmother gives her a dirty look. She gets up. Stepmother practices her Miss America wave. <laughs> 6 p.m. Anna something in her room. It's very orderly and sparse. She types on the computer, constantly erasing what she just typed and retyping. We hear the same commotion going on downstairs that was happening in the previous scene. I, Anna Leigh Crawford, would like to attend your college because I can add a lot of positivity to the atmosphere. The sound of Anna Leigh storming up the stairs. Stupid, 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 stupid assholes! Anna something deletes the sentence. 
I, Anna May Crawford, would like to attend your college because, because... She gives up. The door opens. Anna Lay, I am not in the mood to talk right now. If you're just going to complain, then I'd rather stuff a thousand cotton balls in my ears and bury myself 2,000 feet underground. Anna, Anna, your hair looks flat. Where are your pants? What's up with that? Who are you? You look like my stepmother. Are you in disguise or undercover? Why am I rhyming? This is really weird. You're wearing a wig and also a beard. <laughs> hey there, girl. I'm a fly drag queen. Stylish, opinionated, and my hair is mad sheen. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you in my room? I walked from New York. I followed the moon. Fairy drag mother reveals a plastic wand and points it at Anna. Nothing happens. Enough, enough of this rhyming bullshit. What is up, girl? You like my wand? It glows. Freaky phosphorescent shit. Did you really follow the moon? <laughs> no, I drove. Road trips are so boring. I got sick of all those free podcasts after like seven seconds. <laughs> Do you listen to Freakonomics Radio? No. I thought it would be about freaky people. Turns out it's just about economics. <laughs> so, are we going to go clubbing or what? Anna suddenly goes back to typing. Fairy Drag Mother points her wand at the computer. Nothing happens. Abracadabra. Nothing happens. Fairy Drag Mother shuts the computer. Hey, I didn't say that. An essay? On a Friday? You have got to be kidding me. We're going out. She begins styling Anna's hair and automatically turns into an archetypal chatty hairdresser. So, do you, like, have a boyfriend? <laughs> you sound like my stepdad. <laughs> well, but do you? <laughs> no. Girl, your hair is tangled as shit. Do you use leave-in conditioner? Just chop it off. Excuse me? Chop it off. Shazam! Nothing happened. <laughs> Anna suddenly <laughs> grabs the scissors. Fairy Drag Mother tries to wrangle them away from her. Uh-uh. I wouldn't dare. My hair. Life is just not fair. You might scream if you were one of those middle school chicks who is like, Oh my god, I am so disappointed with everything. Why don't I just like cut off my hair and then my life will be like 150,000 times better. <laughs> Oops. Big mistake, I'm still super disappointed, and like, now I have no hair. <laughs> <laughs> Anna something snatches the scissors and chops a lock of her hair off. Fairy Drag Mother snatches the scissors back from her and starts evening out her hair. She immediately becomes a chatty hairdresser again. So, do you have a girlfriend? No. Top three qualities in a woman, go. Like, as a friend? Or a colleague? Come on now, no playing dumb with Fairy Drag Mother. I am as smart as a dolphin and have lived in all five boroughs, which probably means nothing to you. Point being, I know you're into girls. That's not true. Look. No, for real. Look. Do you think I'm going to judge you? I'm wearing women's size 13 glitter stilettos right now. <laughs> You've got it wrong, though. I don't want to date anyone. Dating seems like a waste of time. It's like... You have to get all intimate with a person, and then you have to have sex with them. The sound of boyfriend one stomping up the stairs. Anna sorry if I made you mad. I think you're really pretty. So not worth it. <laughs> Fine. I told you. No one had to tell me. I'm magical and shit. <laughs> Top three qualities in a woman. Go. Um, funny. Intelligent. At least mildly physically Girl, attractive. Girl, you ain't getting anywhere with someone who's mildly attractive. It's not like I'm so attractive or anything, so I shouldn't have unrealistic expectations. What did that do? I just rid of you of all your self-deprecation. From now on, you're going to be kind to yourself. I feel no different than I did two seconds ago. Oh, but you will. You will. Fairy Drag Mother finishes cutting her hair. Well, la, la, la. Now, on to your clothes. Fairy Drag Mother begins rifling through all her clothes. Can you please not do that? I color coordinated everything when I was six, and it's pretty much been the same way since. So, okay. Fairy Drag Mother pulls out a pair of camouflage pants. What's this from? The war on ugly? <laughs> Anna snatches it from her. If you're here to criticize my haircut and tell me I have subpar fashion sense, then you can leave. My family is already judgmental enough. I'm just speaking the truth. Do you want my help or not? I'll take that as a yes. You need to stop doing all the dirty work for your diva of a mother and your two bratty little sisters. 
and a something, and a something, and a something. Stepmother and stepsisters. Okay. Still doesn't mean you can always be cooking food for them, making them clothes. Shit. Even wetting their collar dresses. Just because you're smarter doesn't mean you gotta help those idiots. Don't call them idiots. So now you're defending them. Come on, Anna. They're no good. Life is more complicated than good and bad. This isn't some fairy tale where my family is evil and I need you to rescue me. <laughs> Shit. My astrologer tells me I gotta be more aware of my tendency to be too blunt. <laughs> you like the stars and shit? I like looking at them. I am a Leo with a Gemini moon, a natural born performer. <laughs> you gotta explore yourself, live a little. What have you been doing all these years? Playing board games and getting high on candy corn? I'm not five. You ever been to the club? Like a beach club or something? The fairy godmother waves the wand and simultaneously pulls a dress from behind her back like an amateur magician at a kid's birthday party. <laughs> she hurls the dress at Anna and does a sassy runway walk out of the room. Anna stares at the dress in her hand. Then she feels her nose short hair. She takes a breath and puts on the dress. 6.05 p.m. Anna something rushes into the living room wearing the dress. Anna something, your hair! You look like a man. What's a man gonna do with your man hair? I don't care if a man likes my hair or not. I don't care about anything. That's not true. Then stop dressing like a total weirdo and wear some makeup like a normal person. Oh, wait, she's wearing a dress? Makeup is a performative mask. What? <laughs> this is precisely why you get, like, zero dates. And you're so pretty. Do you even know how to talk to guys? Do you have okay, Cupid? Tinder? Match.com? <laughs> Christian Mingo? Jade? Jade is for Jewish people, anime. I feel like <laughs> Jewish guys are her thing. I be okay. Enough, enough. We're not discussing this any further. You're gonna be late to Cotillion. She rushes out of the house. OMG! Boyfriend one, boyfriend two, mother! Boyfriend two and mother appear from the kitchen. Boyfriend one comes from upstairs. It is time to go! 6, 10, p.m. Anna something runs after fairy bad weather, walking down the street, holding her heels in her hands and hugging. Wait up! I look ridiculous in this dress. I changed my mind. I don't want to go. Oh, you're going all right, and you're wearing that dress. But I don't feel like me in it. Huh? Then would you rather wear your ripped up boxers? No, but I want to wear pants. I like wearing pants. <laughs> I wish I had some talking mice or some shit to help me. <laughs> the barrier enters and places a pair of pants by fairy drag mother. She sees the pants. She throws the pants at Anna. Put these on after Cotillion. I'm sorry? We're going to Cotillion. My little sister will be there. Then we're going to the club. I'd rather die. <laughs> Tough luck. Anna suddenly puts the pants on. Fairy drag mother sighs and continues walking. 7 p.m. At Cotillion. Narrator is now a man. He acts as the presenter. He speaks into the microphone. Anna Lang stands with boyfriend two and Anna Lang with boyfriend one in a quintessential cotillion pose. Fairy Drive Mother stands with Anna something and Prince in the DJ booth. Stepmother drinks heavily and cheers. Presenting Miss Anna Lay Crawford and her escort, boyfriend one. <laughs> <laughs> they realize they are with the wrong people once again. They go to switch. Anna Lay holds on to boyfriend one's arm. Hold on. Anna May, let's go. Anna May, you are ruining what could possibly be the best day of our lives besides the day we met our true love. What if we switch? Uh, are you out of your mind? I've been dating boyfriend one for like two weeks now. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't mind switching. Me neither. Uh, fine. What if two is hotter anyway? And now presenting Miss Anna Lay Crawford and her escort, Boyfriend 2. Boyfriend 2 gets down on one knee. <gasps> <laughs> Anna Lay Crawford, I've loved you ever since one second ago, and Anna May let me date you instead. Thanks, Anna May. Before then, I only liked you for your tits. That's how I could always tell you to apart. You were the one with the slightly bigger tits. And Anime is the birthmark shaped like Idaho on her butt. I've never seen your butt, though, Anale, but I'm hoping I'll get the chance to when you're my wife, because I am planning to spend the rest of my life with you. 
I'm also hoping I will get to see your tits without a shirt over them at some point this evening. <laughs> Anna Leigh Crawford, will you marry me? Yes, my friend too! I love your love of my mostly average body! <laughs> Finish Cotillion first? No, you're wasting time! Okay, okay. <laughs> Anna Lay? I mean, Anna May, will you like marry me or whatever? Yes, oh my god, this is the best day of my life! You little bitch, you beat me to it! And you already have 100 likes on your status! 101, actually, because your fiance just liked it. <laughs> LOL, the first and more superior sister wins again. <laughs> I wish we were still together. When you look this crappy. What are you doing? <laughs> this woman mad. Where have you been? What is your plan? You know it's a sin. You just can't win. I don't need your bullshit. Leave me alone. We're just trying to help. It's not what mother would condone. I don't care what you think. Get out of my head. Not until you promise. Not to bring that her mother died into your bed. I might vomit. And I'll throw a fit. And mother will not have it. Not one bit. That man woman drugged you. It's got you in a trance. It's going to teach you how to dance. Just look! It's wearing a woman's shirt and a man's pants. So just come on home. We'll show you the way. So long as you promise that you're not gay. <laughs> no thank you, stepsisters. I've made up my mind. I'd rather stay here and leave you behind. If you don't accept me for who I am, then I'll stay here with this woman man. This person has a name, and it, it is Prince. Not the artist formerly known as, or whatever he's been known as since. <laughs> this person is my new friend, and there's nothing you can do, so scurry on home, Anna L and Anna M too. <laughs> Anna, Anna, with no curls, went upstairs in such a world. By mistake, she kissed a girl. How many seconds till we hurl? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh! <laughs> they run away, crying and texting. Wow, your sisters are something. No, I'm something. They are something else. <laughs> Let's go to the club. They exit. 
10 p.m. A neon flashing sign that reads the glass slipper. Loud <laughs> Boy from one and two now playing a gay couple dance together nearby in flashing sandals. <laughs> 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 Slippers Freaky Friday! <laughs> we are about to have a wild night! Yeah! To start off this freak-tastic fiesta, we've got the one, the only, Fairy Drag Mother! <laughs> The bippity boppity boo motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> This is a little story about a motherfucker named Herb, who was also my daddy. My daddy had breath that smelled like methane gas. He burned words to a crisp and spit out their charred remains right in our faces. I used to be a clever girl and spit that ash right back, but he wouldn't have none of it. You have the mouth of a garbage truck. That's why you ain't never gonna be Miss America. Well, fuck Miss America with her hair and her smiling and her world peace. I don't need that. All I need is a rich man. Oh, look at your pathetic life. That rich man you married didn't even turn out to be rich. I hope you die of an overdose in a crack den like your mama. I hope you die too, daddy. Oh wait, it's too late. You're already deceased. <laughs> Get off me! Get the fuck off me! <laughs> Not till you take back all that shit you just said. Repent for your sins. Jesus doesn't talk shit like you do, you dirty little cunt! She gets up. My daddy was a preacher. He <laughs> preached, love your children, and they'll hate you right back. He preached, make a decent life for yourself, or you'll end up in a crack den like your mama. He preached, get married, have kids, continue God's DNA, and be so unhappy you'll want to rip your own head off. She tries to rip her head off. How would you like having a daddy like that? A daddy who'd shove his barbed dove so far down your throat that you choked up soap suds. Men gotta treat us ladies right. They gotta give us the funds, they gotta provide us with booze, and then they gotta just shut the fuck up. <laughs> I am Miss America, and no one is gonna tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> she collapses. She looks exactly like my stepmother. <laughs> she realizes Prince has vanished. Music flares over the speaker. She looks up and sees Prince at the DJ booth with fairy drag mother, beckoning for her to come up. She does. Narrator drags stepmother off by the ankle. Narrator re-enters. Jealous that Prince stole his limelight, he stops the music. He speaks into the microphone. He is now a very old man. Do you ever feel lonely? 
like you're the reincarnation of a bad ancestor. <laughs> a bad apple rotting in your stomach, hardening and fermenting until you cannot breathe, yet you don't know why. You think it's generalized anxiety, <laughs> but it's in your blood, your bones, and has been for centuries. You claw and you scrape it. You try to escape the pain they have caused you, but you never will. Not entirely. It's in the skin behind your ears, <laughs> the queasiness in your large intestine, the illegible thank you notes your mother, her mother, her mother, and her mother made you write. <laughs> <laughs> this is the man I could have been, if I ever was. But I will never be anything more than the bloody pulp that was too thick to sift through your little fingers. He stands there shaking with the microphone. Anna something grabs the microphone away from the narrator. She speaks into it. This is my story. She takes the microphone with her and storms off. Wait, Anna, you can see me? I've seen you the whole time. I just chose to ignore you. Do you remember me? We used to share marzipan and chocolate hearts. How can I remember if that never happened? My father, My father lived, lived on a houseboat in the Middle, in the Middle East. East. That's what he used to say when he went off to jail, so I would know where he was. I don't believe you. I lived with him. You never existed. I did too. You saw me. You were nothing but the bloody pulp that was too thick to sift through my fingers. For one second of my life, I, kn I knew what it would be like to be loved by my own blood. But then that second passed, and you were gone. And my mother was gone, and my father came to love only himself. He told me I was his favorite little boy. They warned me about you. They warned me that you, like everyone else, would try to thwart my dreams. What are your dreams, Anna? To get away from you, and to get the hell out of Georgia. Oh, Anna, do you really think your life will be much better when you leave Georgia? Are you going to search for our father? He won't want you, you lesbian. I don't know any lesbians besides you. There are certainly none in our family, and that's the way it's going to stay. You're a fraud like the rest of them. Even if I leave, it's going to be impossible for you to forget me. Grow up and stop narrating my life. Fairy Dragmother appears. She zaps narrator with her wand. <laughs> Ain't no one got time for that third person omniscient narration. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling my own story since I could talk. First person or no person. I want to go home. Stepmother leaves voice <sighs> Anna something. It is three o'clock in the godforsaken morning. Where the hell are you? Do you not care about your own mama? I practically raised you. I watched that fat, ugly Jamaican lady change your diapers. I popped the zits on your face with a sewing needle. I gave you your first Vicodin. And now that means nothing to you. I'll help you get killed by a two-timing gangster with dirty tennis shoes, you filthy, disrespectful lesbian. Anna, I'm out of brandy. Can you pick some up at the store? <laughs> Anna? Anna? You ungrateful cunt. 6 a.m. Outside the club. Anna something sits on the curb, her head in her hand. Fairy Dragmother stands on the other side, holding her wig in her hand, itching her head. Prince stands, smoking a cigarette. I don't even know you. What? I feel like we're friends. And because we're friends, I'm going to say something to you, and it's that I have no idea how to refer to you as a man, a woman, neutral, something. No, I'm something. <laughs> also, I think probably it doesn't matter. Also, I think we should get the hell out of here. This virgin Chinese hair is itchy as hell. <laughs> Let's go. To China? Maybe. Because there's no way I'm going to fly across the ocean to beat up a bunch of Chinese virgins because they made me feel like there are a thousand million little lice crawling over my head. <laughs> Anna's right. We need to go. By the way, refer to me as they. 
aren't scalping the Chinese version that made wigs for dry queens. It means like I'll go get her some water. Fairy Dragon flies inside. Prince puts out their cigarette and sits on the curb next to Anna. She does not throw up. Why do people do this? What? Drink. It's so awful. You're just inexperienced. It takes time to learn your limits. Anna and Anna May appear in the background dressed as little girls. They play a hand game. Lemonade. Iced tea. Coca-Cola. Pepsi. Turn, Turn around, touch, touch the ground, ground kick your sister, sister out of town! They laugh and throw a suitcase at her as they exit. Anna something and twist stare at the suitcase. Fairy Jack Mother appears with water and pointing her wand at Anna. Anna something approaches the suitcase. Did you? I am magical! Hallelujah! 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 Prince grabs the suitcase. We're going. Two? An unknown destination. Somewhere far, far away. Coming? No, nah, I got other fashionless homebodies to save. <laughs> I, I mean, other people in need of a little makeover. Mm -hmm. Have fun, you two. I'll text your sisters. Thanks. Tell them, tell them I'm under no circumstances finishing their college essays. And don't return my stepmother's 39 calls. Got it. I hereby declare you Anna everything, plus a bag of chips. <laughs> you know, Anna everything sounds like a bagel. I think that I'll just go by Anna. I am really hungry. Let's go get some breakfast. Prince goes to exit. Anna stays behind for a second. How, how do you not let it get to you? What? The staring, the name calling. You know, all that. Because I don't give a shit. <laughs> 6 a.m. Anna May and Anna Lay sit in the living room, sipping juice out of straws, texting frantically. Neither one looks up. I'm already pinning dresses on my Pinterest board. I'm never going to sleep again. <laughs> oh my god, look at this vintage one! The lace bodice is to die for. Where did you learn such a... Such a... Such a big word! She throws her phone to the ground. Anna Lay picks the phone up and hands it to her. On my phone, silly. The applique on this modified A-line is simply magnificent. What is it? Anna, something's going far, far away. Good. That means she won't write our essays. What told you? Unknown number. Eh, who cares about college? We're getting married. Right, we're getting married! <laughs> 6 a.m. Stepmother makes out with boyfriend one in the alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> boyfriend two stands there awkwardly. Stepmother looks up. Make him go away. <laughs> Dude, go away. Dude, that's her girlfriend's mom's you're making out with. So? She's hot. I'm gonna tell the Annas. If you do, I swear to God, I will kill every member of your pathetic little family. <laughs> now, get out of here. Wow, Miss Crawford. <laughs> Older women are so much hotter. I wish I could marry you instead. <laughs> and that I'm just good at helping people, and right now your stepmother isn't waking up, and I think you should come home. <laughs> so that's the end. But is it really? What haunts us lingers indefinitely, like a perfume from the bazaar with a sweet, dirty taste, like rotting orange peels. She may escape, she may <laughs> return, but sooner or later, she'll crash and burn. It is her story, but I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm the ruler of her mind and body at large. I may be amorphous. I may appear dumb. 
but appearance is deceitful. That's my rule of thumb. So now I leave you with your own demise, your own heartbreak, demons, and lies. I am the narrator, so I must end this play and take you out of Garden City, GA. <laughs> Believe what you will, the rest is hearsay. Now I'll watch the night turn into day. He sits down and watches the sunrise. The world fades away. End. Mm -hmm.